Yeah. Woke up early just to pray for a lick. Uh, brand new rolly with the bust down for gas. Ay. In the jungle, man, you know how it gets. Uh, they niggas be chatting just to bump up their lip. Ay. Woke up early just to pray for a lick. Uh, brand new rolly with the bust down for gas. Ay. In the jungle, man, you rush and roll it. What up, Pat? What's going on, big dog? Good to see you. In a minute, brother. Been a minute. We're here in Miami now, Fifth Street Gym. You guys see it? 100%. Check it out right here. Yeah. This is spot. The classic the right here. On. Everything. Glad to have Mike here. So beautiful weather. Can't complain. Can't be upset right now. No, no. So let's go sit down. Let's and get it. All right. All right. Fantastic. I'm loving the tire outside. You know what I'm yeah. saying? <laughs> yeah. Real gym feel right here. Bro, for like conditioning, this would be monstrous to flip this all the way down and back. That would be different. Oh, it's crazy. Even the fitness classes that Dino and Tom got at the gym right now, I mean, it's crazy. They got them working in here, doing the run back and forth, getting mm -hmm. a good sweat in. Yeah. Before we start talking a little bit about your recent fight, I got to say, everyone, go to the Pod Matrix, hit subscribe, follow us on Instagram, Brooklyn Boxing Podcast. Follow the Pod Matrix on Instagram as well. Facts. We have a ton of content coming. Fifth Street Gym Pod. We were recording yesterday. We got a lot of stuff on the way. But Mike, you're here down from New I'm York. I'm here, man. Came down south a few days. You know what I'm saying? Enjoy the weather. Some palm trees. We got six of the essence I'm here. <laughs> Just fought in Mexico, got the knockout, yeah. big right hand to the temple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's funny. Um, the knockout, it was because it was so close range and the angle that the stream had like uh was filmed on. A lot of people thought I hit him with a body shot, they didn't know what happened, but no, it was a right hand on the left side between his temple and his ear, like right at the side, fell to a knee. He got up, but then like I guess he was wobbly or dizzy or something, and he just like collapsed again. And um, that was it. I honestly, I mean, with the hit, like, it was pretty hard. Like, I felt my knuckles, like, crunch through the glove. But I didn't think he was going to stay down. I thought, you know, Lomachenko style, you can get dropped, but you got to get back up. Same with me. First round, he caught me with the right hand. I can explain that. I just kind of gave it to him. Um, but I thought he was going to get back up. But, hey, man, I'm happy to get the TKO or the knockout, whichever they call it as. I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah, and Mike was talking to me off camera. He was saying he's been doing some sparring, too, laying people down. So I don't know if there's <laughs> something going on in the – in the tacos over there in Mexico. <laughs> what's going on but mike's got some newfound power i've been doing a lot of push-ups doing a lot of push-ups a lot of push-ups <laughs> getting strong so and yeah, all, man. all you uh welterweights you're on notice right now mike Hughes i'm working for you. <laughs> i'm working i'm staying sharp and i'm working man i'm feeling confident right now i can't complain but great. walk me through fighting in mexico i know that's that was your second fight right second mexico, fight yeah and, um you know the fans down there they fight fans in mexico they love it so yeah, it's a good vibe it. right oh it was amazing that was honestly like some of the, the nicest people I've ever experienced in my life. After the fight, especially because I went down in the first round, I got back up to finish it in the next round. Everyone kind of looked at me with like some extra warrior image. Yeah. So people were trying to like take pictures, just like take my contact and stuff. Everyone was just really, really nice. So it was amazing, man. It was amazing. I felt like a superhero when I when I finished that yeah, fight. The, Mex the Mexican fans, it's crazy. I mean, yeah. they just love seeing a guy who's like a real fighter, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Who comes through right. adversity and like gets a finish like that. So I'm mm -hmm. sure they're hyped. Maybe you gain some new fans down there. Hopefully, I think so. Yeah. I think so, yeah, for sure. So Atlanta's next, right? So you're Atlanta. Hot Atlanta. Hot Atlanta, yeah. It's going to be, I mean, look, Mexico was like 109 when I was out there. So I don't know how incredible or intense the heat's going to feel to me in Atlanta. But Mexico was crazy hot. But yeah, Atlanta, we're going to be July 31st. Um, a bunch of guys that I know from the amateurs um, in New York are flying out there and they're fighting out there too. Uh, some guys that I've fought, some guys that I've sparred with and trained with. So it's going to be uh, a New York heavy card. It's going to be fun. And uh, a lot of those guys on the card, right? Church Street guys or uh, mix, um, mix of guys, mix of gyms? Nah, I believe I'm the only person from Church Street on that card. Um, mostly it's going to be like people from Brooklyn, the Bronx, all over the place. Like there's, I think, two people that I've fought in the amateurs that are on that card or a pro now. Um, one of my boys, Zay Flaherty, shout out to Isaiah Zay. Um, he fought in Mexico. He just had his pro debut. He won with me as well. He's fighting on that card as well. Um, it's uh, run by the Latin American promotions and my boy Big Time, uh, Justin Biggs, Big uh, BPE, Big Time Promotions. Um, so, yeah, we're going gonna to go put in work. My boy Christian Otero, he's 3-0. and uh, Everyone just, you know, on the rise, We're just working hard and trying to come up. So That's dope. So everyone yeah. make sure to go check that out. We'll post the, the link and, and all the information for streaming and all that stuff when, when the uh, fight arrives. But, you know, I'm sitting with Mike Hughes right now. If you guys don't remember, this was the second guest <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. ever. First guest ever, I think I'm about to say I, I got, the I got first. Yeah. Yeah, first. It's all good. <laughs> first guest ever that we had in studio in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we got an OG here, right? <laughs> word, word. Sitting set, down set it and, up. Um, 
not only, you know, obviously it's good to hear about your career, what you got going on. It's awesome hey, to see you on a roll now. And, um, but I want to talk to you a little bit about just the boxing landscape right now. There's it's, a lot of shit wild. going yeah, on. We got the YouTube scene, but we also got a lot of great fights on the way mm -hmm. for just straight up boxing this summer. A lot of boxing kind of going to be on fire the next couple months. Yeah. We got Spence Pacquiao coming up, Wilder Fury. Yeah, what are man. your thoughts on, you know, as a welterweight, what do you think about Pac-Man and Spence? <sighs> Pac Spence, I mean, salute to both of them for, you know, signing the contract and getting that done. For me, I'm a OG Pacquiao fan, like since Pacquiao's like first fight in the United States, I think that was when he was getting punched in his thigh and his leg was hurt and he like still fought to get like a draw or something like that. It was like low blows. I've been a Pac fan since I was a kid. So for me, Spence is currently like my favorite fighter of the modern era, but I still, I gotta go with Pac. I think I have like a friendly $20 bet out there. I'm not trying to bet too heavily, you know what I'm saying? But this this fight could be, um, it could be incredible. Um, Pacquiao does have better defense than a lot of people get, uh, give him credit, uh, credit for. It's not like anything flashy. It's kind of more basic with the hands up, but he does block a lot more punches than people think. Um, Spence is a reach on him. He has power, he has speed, he has great timing, he has uh, great body, play, body shot placement. Pacquiao is super explosive. He throws a barrage of punches in from angles that a lot of other fighters don't um, emulate. So who could win? We got to see. Um, how much? How much is the size going to come into play? I mean, a lot of people it, are it, saying that Spence is going to just walk through him. He, which is... I'm, I mean, to be honest, he he might kind of walk him down and just walk through him in a sense. But at the same time, Spence is he can move. He could box and move, but he's a little bit more of a, like, just stand your ground, sit and just uh, shoot kind of a guy. So that might play in Pacquiao's favor. If Pacquiao still has his, you know, uh, legs, he's, you know, he's an explosive in and out type of guy. So that could play in his favor to just shoot in, right. land some shots, pivot, roll out, something like that. Um, it's going to be action packed. It's right? going to be action. Yeah. You don't know how long it's going to last. Yeah. Um, both have power to drop the other person and or finish the other person. Um, Spence, I would imagine, probably would have the better opportunity to catch Pacquiao in the middle of a combo coming in, and that could really do some damage. It's also Southpaw versus Southpaw, so that's another interesting factor of the fight. I just want to see what happens. I'm going Pacquiao because of the OG ties, but I do like Spence, so whoever wins, I ain't going to be upset. I'm with you. I'm going with Pac-Man on this one, but with Wilder and Fury... Before we get into like the YouTube scene, Crazy. I just want to touch on that heavyweight matchup. Gotcha, man. And um, you know, if you could tell me, does Wilder have a chance? After seeing what Fury did to him in the second thing, do you think he can make the adjustments? Yeah. Do you think Fury's playing around too much? He's posting a lot of stuff in Miami here in Miami, <laughs> partying, having a good time. Um, maybe he's not training as hard as he should be. Maybe he is. I don't know. There's a lot of questions there. So what do you think the about all The thing for me with, with Fury posting, you know, troll type of content is that's just Fury's character. So I don't necessarily, I would never take Fury posting like partying, this, 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 like too seriously. I think that's him just messing with your head, doing what he yeah. does best. Um, does Wild have a chance? He always has a chance. A puncher always has a chance. I've seen him working, you know, he's posted pad work with the new trainer, stuff like yeah. that, working way more versatile um, techniques and striking combinations and stuff, which I'm very happy to see. I did feel as though he's gotten ahead on his career just based off of sheer power so much that he just kind of negated working on things to make him more of a versatile, complete fighter. Um, is he taking it a little bit too soon? I don't know. If he literally just started to get back to training now, after the fight, all the time is passing, he's just now working on new things, and yeah, it's too soon. Because you can work on new things for six to eight months. Who was it? I think it was um, Tim Bradley in like a, a previous uh, fight broadcast. He said something about it. You can work on stuff for like six months in the gym, and it doesn't show up in the, in the fight that comes next. It shows up in the fight after that. It takes like a year, year and a half for the new stuff to implement. Who knows? Um, very, when it comes to boxing skill, I think Fury off of boxing would win 10 out of 10 times. He's like, in my opinion, the closest thing to a modern day Muhammad Ali that we have. Um, if Wilder can implement some new things and not just go with the straight paw jab <laughs> and then just a one right hand, he could, he could do something. Um, I think for this fight, Wilder needs to make sure that there's no controversy at the end. <laughs> His people got to check Fury's gloves before the fight. You think there's something to that? I don't know. I mean, the thing, I will say this. When you see a picture of a dude landing it's the left and, his, yeah. and the glove is flat back here, that's highly suspect. You think it's open hand? No? 
No, bro, this you. I'm, I'm not that flexible. The glove was literally like touching his own yeah, wrist. No, that's I've flex. That, that's I've seen suspect. the video. It is, a, it is a little odd, honestly. Like I, I struggled to say that, like you know, he was loading his gloves or anything crazy. Yeah, like that. yeah I'm but not like trying maybe, to say that. Maybe but his hand was a little lower. I don't know. All I'm gonna say is Wilder, my man. Check the gloves beforehand. Let's not have any, you know, complaining and crying about this, this, this after. Check the gloves. Throw hands. And you'll have his new trainer, Malik Scott, a former guest of ours, and a good guy. And, and you know, I think he's got a great mind for the sport. And, mm-hmm. and it's clearly, like, trying to implement a lot of new stuff um, in Wilder's game. So, I'm sure he'll be in the locker room checking the gloves. I mean, yeah, there can't yeah, be. <laughs> yeah. They can't bring that up again. They got to check that this time. So. Yeah. I, it's, it's, as long as Wilder is able to execute whatever new um, – training techniques and combinations he's been working on he has a much better shot if he just goes back to his old school paw and then one right hand he's gonna get destroyed again I think that he might have in my opinion maybe wanted to let AJ and Fury go give himself a little more time to just train in silence work on things in silence and then pick up from there he's just you know he's prideful he's eager to you know get that revenge so if he does win it could make it an interesting thing because then they could go for potentially a fourth fight right right you know there's a lot of a lot of fights there's 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 opportunities yeah there's opportunities yeah we'll see but we'll see for sure in the uh, youtube landscape right now there's a lot going on there's really a lot you can talk about there but i just kind of want to boil it all down to do you think this is saving boxing getting more fans or do you think this is killing boxing those are kind of the two extremes. It could be somewhere in the middle. Do you think it's good? Do you think it's bad? Do you think it's more fans to the sport? Or do you think it's just... You, you know, know, the funny part about the the more fans to the sport thing is there's a, a kid, he's like 12 years old. He's actually like big for his age, but a 12-year-old kid from Brazil who I train in Church Street these days. And he got into boxing after watching Jake Paul fight. Like, I don't remember what <laughs> fight it was. But yeah, he watched Jake Paul fight and he's like, yo, I want to box. So in essence... It is actually bringing in new fans because that kid is now an actual fan of boxing. He's watching Canelo. He's watching all, you know, the fights and stuff like that. But the problem is that sometimes it brings in people who only want to watch YouTube, um, the thriller type of over-the-top type of, you know, um, events. If those people want to convert and just watch genuine boxing then that's okay with me. If they're only ever looking for circus type of events where it's it's partially like a Grammy Awards where they have like these incredible music things, then you have like stand-up comedy with people doing jokes, then you have awkward B-roll moments where you'll see a person like, wait, is this my mark? Do I stand here? What are we rolling? Oh, rolling now? Hey, guy, like that's just like, if that's what you want to see, then for me, it's taking away the integrity. I think that right now, it kind of goes with a clash of mentalities where we're in 2021, you have new era people, new age people who are into, and not into necessarily, but just in support of and open-minded with, you know, relationship stuff, non-binary, gender identity and stuff like that. And all with boxing, then you also have old school people who are just like, no, conventional man and woman, you know, uh, or man and man, woman and woman, whatever. Um, marriage you can't be in open relationships but you have other people who are open to other things with boxing right now it's kind of like the old school purist thing which i guess you call me a little bit where i'm like damn they're taking away the integrity but then there's the new era uh new era way of thinking where it's like you know what nah this is beneficial for the sports then just the future it's a whole other lane for us to climb into so or, or to travel uh, alone so i don't know for me i'm not really a fan of the youtube uh boxing stuff yeah. Um, Hopefully there's a silver lining and like some more hopefully. fans come along. But I think the danger and like Eddie Hearn summed it up really good in an interview the other day as he talked about like, you know, if boxing promoters and, and, and organizations don't do a better job of making big fights and not having those bullshit um, fights where, you know, you know the winner before the guys step in the right, ring. Right, right, right. Um, you know, that's what the promoters got to focus on. Having good fights, getting the fans really involved and, and, and interested or else people are going to turn more to the, the circus show. And, and then yeah. uh, if that's making big dollars, then the sport's going to he- start heading that way, unfortunately. Right. So so hopefully the boxing promoters step it up, the organizations start putting on better and big events, and, and we'll get it rolling. So, you know, we'll see. It's an interesting time right now. Um, more eyes on the sport, hopefully. And, um, you know, that's kind of that on that scene. But, but guys, I think uh, it's time to switch it up a little bit. We're going to walk into the gym right now, and I want Mike to show us. Before we walk into the gym, I just got to say real quick, shout out and major salute to Clarissa Shields. 
She is, yeah. I want to say, the first boxer. She got to, bro. She yeah. put in work. The first boxer to transition to MMA successfully, like the big time boxers, because I remember who was it? James Tony fought like Ken or <laughs> Frank Shamrock, and he got tack tackled, Couture, choked yeah, out in yeah, two seconds. Oh, uh, Randy Couture yeah, yeah. got destroyed, bro. Like she was losing the first round, second round. She was. Yo, she was losing. She could have potentially given up the arm and a few Kimura arm lock, arm bar situations. She fought through it. And she got the TKO, yeah, TKO, TKO in the third yeah. round. So shout out to Chris Shields. Keep on killing it. Quote for real. Respect. 100%. Yo, I'm actually really glad you brought that up because that was actually a really cool thing to see her mm -hmm. fight through those first two rounds after mm -hmm. really getting dominated. Yeah. And then coming back and getting the win. So she has a lot of potential, a lot of stuff to learn, but she's right. young and and, and that's awesome. Like you said, she's one of the few people crossing over and having Cross success. With us, yeah. But I will give a, also a shout out to Clay Collard, who fought in the co-main event of that, gotcha. of that card. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he has been on a roll. I mean, he's won his fight against Anthony Pettis in mm -hmm. PFL, just won again this past weekend. And then he fought like four or five times on top rank through the quarantine, boxing. So this is a dude doing both yeah, actively, yeah, yeah. getting staying, wins. Staying with, staying so busy, it's yeah. like, he, you know, he's not on uh, Clarissa Shields' level in terms of, like, you know, success in the sport of boxing, but he's another guy that's doing both and having right, a lot right, of success. Right. So shout out to him. Shout out to Clarissa. 100%. Hope to see her uh, continue to get some wins and maybe get in the UFC and get that big payday. Facts. Let's get it, yeah. All right, let's go. Right. So we're walking in here. Um, we're going to go up to one of these little dummies here. Mike, I want to have you show... How you got that knockout this past <laughs> All right, I got you. Right here? Right, so we, we see the, the dummy right here. Yeah. Your yeah. opponent right here. You know, he was he was more he was more sleeping. Like <laughs> yeah, he was a little more to the side. Like this to the side, but but show me the combination or what happened. So long story short, the dude, I like he like tried to duck or something. I held his head down. The ref didn't stop me from holding his head, so I just hit him with an uppercut, picked his head up, and I threw like a cross. But when I threw the cross, I turned southpaw to change my angle, and he didn't see it. So I threw a left, caught him on like the jaw, and then he was leaning over to the right a little bit, and I chopped it down. And from here, I just like put all my weight on the right hand, sat on it, caught him right here. And he dropped to the floor, and I kind of fell on top of him, and I was like, oh, he's down. Went away, and that was it. Yeah, but it was an uppercut. Boom. 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 Turn southpaw real quick. Most people didn't see I turned southpaw in that situation. So a little bit of a little bit of Marvin Hagler going on. A little something, something, yeah. Stance, Terrence Crawford, all that. Mike Tyson too. Mike Tyson was just southpaw a lot, but people he would do it so quickly with explosive combos, you would notice it. But yeah, so a whole bunch of fighters, a whole bunch of fighters. Yeah, well, yeah. appreciate that little breakdown. Hope to see that again in Atlanta. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you too, bro. We'll get the link for that fight. Make sure to promote it and everything. You Thank see you, us man. live in the Fifth Street gym here, Mike, my man. Thank you appreciate again, you, brother. 100%. First ever episode. Now, whatever this is, 37, 38, <laughs> we're, we're getting up there. So. Coming back to the home Thanks base. Again, bro. Appreciate, Appreciate you, my man. Look at you.